I had my first open heart surgery when I was eight days old. I had my second one at 17 months and I had my third and likely final one at six years old. Wow. Hi, I'm Chloe Temption. I'm a singer and a songwriter, and I lived with pulmonary hypertension for 12 years. On August 5th, 2020, I received the life-saving gift of a double lung transplant. It's a true miracle that I'm alive today. I created Super Brave Kids because I believe that children who are living with chronic health conditions have the answers to some of life's most challenging questions, which is why I call this series of interviews Life Lessons from Super Kids. Join us as we interview kids from all over the world who have one thing in common. They are all superheroes disguised as kids. Please help me welcome today's guest. When I land and breathe. Let's just start by having you tell us your name, age, where you're from. Okay, so I'm Bella. I'm 15. I'll be 16 in like a month. And I live in San Diego. May I get right to the point and ask you what you are dealing with in terms of your chronic illness? Well, I have a uh, type of CHD called Tetralogy of Fallot. It's, it's a complex congenital heart defect. Um, I was diagnosed when I was, you know, a little baby. And what were these surgeries? What is the, what was the aim of the surgery? So in the very first one, basically my heart, what my left artery, I believe, wasn't pumping blood properly as fast as it should have been. The first surgery was really to correct that because that was uh, like absolutely critical. Like if I wasn't getting oxygen and blood mm-hmm. flow, it wasn't going to happen. My heart doesn't work like most people's. It I've had to go to doctors and get surgeries Mm -hmm. to help help it work like other people's and now I still limits me but it doesn't limit me as much as it could especially because of all this new technology and it sounded actually interesting because it was this lack of oxygen clean oxygen getting to the Mm -hmm. rest of your body which I guess in similar in pulmonary hypertension there's this sort of lack of this oxygen flow but you don't need a, a supplemental oxygen obviously nope good. How has this condition affected your life? Uh, I think it for sure affected me a lot more when I was younger because I would have to go in for checkups more often. Mm-hmm. Um, I had surgery. The one, only one I can really remember was when I was six and that I couldn't go to school for like a month after that. Mm-hmm. So that was really hard. And how it kind of affects me now that I'm in high school, uh, I can't really play any sports, which is kind of sad because yeah. I've, like, I've seen a lot of, like, awesome camaraderie and, like, the kind of fun competition spirit, and I would really like to play sports, but I can't, but it's okay. I've found something I love in theater. I've actually done costumes for, like, three of my school productions, and I absolutely love that. Fantastic. So that's been cool, because I wouldn't have ever been able to discover that had I been able to play sports. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in, you know, seventh grade, and everyone was complaining about having to run the mile in PE, I'm like, well least you can (laughs) exactly and then so during like this coronavirus time Mm -hmm. and before things started to get like super serious everyone was kind of like oh like don't worry we're teenagers we're teenagers like we'll be fine don't worry about it but I'm kind of here like yeah well I do have to worry about it (laughs) yes I'm guessing there's no sort of pain involved it's physical it's like a shortness of breath Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, which I totally understand. And mm-hmm. is there an end to it in the sense that that just came out terribly, but is there an end to it? <laughs> Let's get really morbid. Is there an end? Is there an actual cu- cure? I'm guessing there, there isn't. No. I mean, at least at this point in medical yeah. advancements, there's not. Yeah. Has it ever made you feel alone? Yes. Is this your answer? Mm-hmm. Especially, so I had my surgery, my big open heart surgery when I was six, but I had, you know, a few catheterizations, like smaller surgeries after that. And so that was kind of hard, especially like kind of having to explain that to my friends. Yes. Because they knew what surgeries were, but they were kind of like, oh, like, are you getting your tonsils out? I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, so you're all going to be all good when you're back to school. I'm like, well, no, not really. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of. Especially when you're younger, a lot of people don't understand that this is like a lifelong thing. Yeah. They assume, oh, you have the surgery and then you're going to be fine. Like, no, it's a battle and, and to keep, you know, going to doctor's appointments and having surgeries and keep limiting myself. And so that's kind of been a little bit lonely. That feeling that they don't get it necessarily. Yeah. Completely. The, does the fear of it take over for you 
or have you kind of learned to live with it and understand that it's just that that's that's life kind of thing if that makes yeah. sense it's something I do think about, but I think I've been pretty good about not, like, obsessing over it and letting it kind of overshadow everything I do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm aware of, you know, the risks and the possibilities, but I really try to just live life kind of in the moment and not yeah. stress it could happen, I guess. How could you help somebody feel that way? Somebody who's really, really obsessed with how they feel, really, really scared about how they feel. How can you get them to where you are? Because that's a very big deal to be able to be where you are psychologically. Mm-hmm. Oh, what yeah. did you tell them to kind of get them to like release the anxiety and just live their life and be present? I think you can't really control anything. Mm-hmm. But what you can control is what you obsess over. Yeah. And how you let your thoughts affect your life. You can't control what's going to happen to your body, but you can control your thoughts. And I think even if it does happen at some point, letting it, you know, thinking about it 24-7 isn't going to change anything. That's great. Thank you. I'll use that for myself. I'm like, please um, help everyone else. (laughs) Go, Bella. Give the advice to everyone else. I'm like, what's the advice, you know? Help me, help me. What is your biggest worry? Uh, My biggest worry, honestly, a lot of it is for when I get older and I... Um, you know, healthcare in the U.S. is expensive, and when I get older, I have to be on my own healthcare plan and deal with all of the financial complications of all of this. That's honestly what I'm most worried about. Mm-hmm. So I'm lucky now. Like, I know I'm 15 on my parents' insurance, yeah. but later in life, I'm going to have to kind of deal with that myself. Yeah, interesting. So that so finance is the biggest worry. Yeah, honestly. What is your greatest challenge? It's not one specific thing related to mm-hmm. it. It's just all of the little parts of life that it affects I guess I think a lot of it is just the unknown especially because I am pretty young Mm -hmm. so I really don't know like what this condition could hold for me in the future like it's just you know especially a lot of the research on CHD is also pretty new like there Mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of patients who are you know 70s 80s who really know what it's like to live with it up until your old age so a lot of it is yeah the unknown like I don't my heart is going to, you know, malfunction yeah. at some point or I'm going to end up in the hospital or what. When you do feel down, what do you do to pull yourself out of that feeling? I think sometimes what I'll do is I just need to kind of take a break from whatever I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. So I like to make a giant bowl of popcorn and then just sit in my bed and I'll watch Netflix or I'll read a book. Yes. And just kind of, kind of, you know, wind down and relax and get my mind on something else. It always makes me feel a little bit better. But yes, Netflix is a saving grace when you need it. What is a superhero to you? To me, a superhero is someone who goes above and beyond what they are expected, uh, what is expected of them. And they try to, they put out as much good for the world as they possibly can you know, they don't have to have special powers. I don't think Superman, but they just... I mean, Batman doesn't have any powers, and he's a superhero, right? Mm-hmm. He just tries to... A superhero is someone who tries to do good and helps others. And, you know, maybe they have a little bit more intelligence or bravery or strength than the average person, but it can really be anyone. What ha- What's some advice you can offer someone out there who's going through a challenging time? Something that's helped me a lot is take it day by day. I can't take it day by day, take it hour by hour. I'm a show I'm, uh, the show I was watching that said something along the lines of like, you can hold, withstand anything for 10 seconds. Mm. And then the 10 seconds just resets and it resets. And so I think thinking about where you are and Focusing it maybe not on being so devastated over things you can't control, but thinking about what you can do. If you can't get the situation in control, what you can do to help yourself feel better. If you can't think on the long term, at least think on the short term, I think. That's- yeah, I love that. I love that. Do you think in the long term ever? Or do you try to keep, keep it short term? I think definitely. I think I try to think in the long term. 
sometimes if it's just so overwhelming and I can't, I'm like, okay, because for me, you know, college is the next step, thinking about, you know, where I'm going to go to college, what I'm going to major in, grad school, job, all that. I'm like, okay, that's my whole life ahead of me. Maybe I'll just make some popcorn right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Thank perfect. you so yes. much for doing this. Thank yeah. you for doing this. We'll talk to yeah. you soon. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Bella. Okay. Thank okay. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>